JBN, we keep you informed. New Year's morning police shooting on Kingston waterfront. In what was likely one of the earliest shooting incidents that resulted in injury in 2020, a man who was said to be a vendor was shot and injured by the police on Wednesday morning during a confrontation on the Kingston waterfront where many Jamaicans had earlier gathered to ring in the new year. Reports are that about 1.10 a.m., a police team saw the man acting in a boisterous manner and approached him. A police officer from the city center station who was on the scene said that while having a conversation with the individual, the man armed himself with a machete and held on to a child who was not more than eight years old. Reports are that the police tried to get the man to calm down, but his boisterous behavior continued. The full details of what happened next are not clear, but reports are that the man was subsequently shot and injured by a member of the police team. The injured man was taken to the hospital, where he has been admitted for treatment. Was Moreland man killed in a hit and run? The Witton police are investigating a hit and run in which a man was killed on the Galloway Main Road in Witton, Westmoreland on Sunday. He is Ruan McGrowder, a laborer of Thompson Lane, Deans Valley in the parish. Reports are that shortly after 5 a.m., McGrowder was walking along the Galloway Main Road when he was struck by a motor vehicle. The driver of the vehicle did not stop. Persons who may have information about this incident are being urged to contact the Witton Police or the nearest police station. Construction of Maypen Fire Station to commence this year, says Mackenzie. Construction of the new Maypen Fire Station in Clarendon is expected to commence in the 2020-2021 financial year. Local Government and Community Development Minister Desmond Mackenzie made the announcement during a recent press conference at the ministry's offices in Kingston. He also advised that discussions are far advanced for the construction of two additional fire stations, one in the corporate area and the other in rural Jamaica. Papine has been an area that has been looked at for years as it relates to the location of a new fire station. Those discussions are well advanced, the minister said. Additionally, Mackenzie said discussions are underway to identify a location in South Trelawney to build the other fire station. Based on the survey that was conducted by the Jamaica Fire Brigade, JFP, and the constant demand and complaints from residents, especially in that section of Trelawney, there is definitely a need for such a facility, he stated. Mackenzie said that since 2016, the government has provided more trucks and other equipment to the JFP. We have also invested a significant amount of money in upgrading fire stations across the country, he said. Government committed to reducing murder rate, says Prime Minister in New Year's message. Prime Minister Andrew Holness says his administration is committed to tackling the crime monster and bringing down the alarming murder rate in Jamaica, where more than 26,000 lives have been lost violently over the last two decades. In his New Year message, Holness said, it pains his heart that many of our brothers and sisters and our children were deprived of seeing 2020 due to violence. The Prime Minister's New Year's message. We happily welcome the clear vision of 2020, embracing this new year for all the potential and promise it holds, and we give God thanks for sparing our lives to see yet another decade. We remember those who left us last year, like our former Prime Minister Edward Siaga, and many other of our loved ones, heroes and benefactors. We give God thanks for their lives and stand on their contribution to overcome the challenges and take advantage of the opportunities of the new year. It pains my heart that many of our brothers and sisters and our children were deprived of seeing 2020 due to violence. This is a social epidemic and requires national consensus around the use of emergency powers to bring this disease under control. My government is committed to bringing the murder rate down. The target set by the social partnership approximates the regional average of 16 murders per 100,000 of population within the near term. Unfortunately, there are those among us that appear to accept the high level of crime and violence as normal. Political disunity and gamesmanship over crime fighting and national security policy have real effects on our lives. Lack of support from the opposition resulted in a break in the SOEs for the first four months of 2019 
And an unusual spike in homicides in November meant that we ended 2019 approximately 3.4% higher in homicides than 2018 when we saw a record decline of 22%. While the SOEs have been very effective when and where we have been able to use them, we have used the space they create to build the capacity of our national security apparatus to respond to the current level of crime and violence in the society. This fiscal year will see the largest allocation of $5.28 billion to equip the police force with cutting edge technology to enhance their ability to detect, record, respond, and prevent crimes. This year, the JCF will receive the first set of purpose-built police cars fitted with tracking devices and onboard computers. The JCF's radio and communication system is being improved. The long-talked-about electronic station diary will start implementation, and police stations right across Jamaica are being refurbished or built anew. Several administrative and operational improvements are being undertaken internally. Greater emphasis and resources are being targeted at the investigative and intelligence capacity of the force. Whilst these transformational actions are not yet mature, already we are seeing the impact on the number and quality of cases being brought before the court to secure convictions. The police have over 13 major gang cases in various stages to come before the courts. Using the space created by the SOEs, the JCF and the MOCA continue the long, hard, and tedious work of intelligence gathering and investigations as they build cases and make arrests using regular police powers and conventional methods. Your government recognizes the importance of social intervention in breaking the cycle of violence and crime, particularly at the community level, and we intend to spend significantly on intervening in some of the social conditions underpinning crime and violence. After more than 20 years of experience with social intervention programs, the lesson learned is that such interventions have to occur in parallel and coordinated with security intervention. The zones of special operations were designed to provide a security environment within which social intervention could be maximized. The Mount Salem and Denham Town pilot zones have been a success. And this year, we will have the resources in place to declare other areas as zones of special operations. Ultimately, we will take back Jamaica from the criminals, community by community. Jamaica's high homicide rate did not happen overnight. In the decade of the 80s, 4,870 murders were committed in Jamaica. By the decade of the 90s, this increased to 7,621 murders. And by the decade of the 2000s, even with the formation of various special squads and units, murders skyrocketed to 13,418. This past decade, 2010 to 2019, has seen a reduction in murders to 12,698, still too high. The level of crime we are now experiencing is over and above the capacity of our existing security apparatus to manage. While the crime and murder numbers have grown over the past four decades, successive governments have not increased the national security budget apace, or kept abreast with technology, or increased the number of investigators and other critical capabilities commensurately, or effectively controlled corrupt activity in the force. It is only in this last decade that any serious policy and legislative reform have been undertaken, and certainly within this term, that serious budgetary, manpower, and technological upgrades have been made. All Jamaicans should take hope that with sound policy, programs, and plans, we can reduce murders. But it will take a long-term, concerted, and united commitment to stick with the plan. I'm confident in our plan to secure Jamaica. For the first time, Jamaica is engaged in building a national security architecture fit for the times that will deal with domestic threats, but will also deal effectively with our air and maritime space and borders, in addition to securing our cyber domain, which is becoming more important 
as the world becomes digital. All of this cannot be done overnight or even in two years. It takes a year and a half to procure equipment, at least two years in some cases to draft and pass legislation, several years to train up a seasoned investigator and other skilled law enforcement operators. Much of this is now being done behind the scenes, and we will intensify our efforts to bring these reforms and investments more quickly to fruition to save more lives. The disorder on our roads and in public spaces is now a national concern. Billions have been invested in improving our road infrastructure, which will improve connectivity, efficiency, and comfort. But some among us are determined to breach all the rules of the road, disregard other road users, and purvey carnage and chaos on our streets. Aside from the general socio-emotional improvement in our respect for law and order, which comes from our education system and how we bring up our children. Increasing the detection of violations, increasing enforcement, and securing swift convictions through the courts must be the area of focus for government policy. The JCF has already established the Public Safety and Traffic Enforcement Branch, which is still in its infancy, but has been impactful. To complement their work, the government has decided to invest heavily in traffic management and traffic violation detection technology. And this year, the traffic ticketing system and the enabling regulations for the new Road Traffic Act should be complete. Many more traffic offenders will be caught and ticketed, and there will be no more amnesty for the foreseeable future. Ultimately, however, enforcement and technology have limits, whether in crime fighting or traffic enforcement. Our lasting peace and abiding order depend on how responsibly we act individually and as a people. We will never be able to have cameras and traffic police on every road to arrest every driver who decides to overtake a line of traffic in rush hour or speed dangerously on a local road. However, if you decide to slow down and drive according to the rules of the road and wear your helmet, we can bring down the crashes for 2020. The life you save could very well be your own. Like our security infrastructure, there have been many decades of underinvestment in our health infrastructure. I've toured some of our hospitals and clinics and seen firsthand the discomfort of patients and the strain on staff, particularly when there is an upsurge in illnesses, as in the case with dengue. The government is now steadily increasing investments in our health infrastructure to better serve patients with over $10 billion of investments planned for health facilities and over $3 billion dedicated to rebuilding the Cornwall Regional Hospital. We have spent approximately $2 billion on dengue control through environmental cleanup programs in communities and various public health interventions, including purchasing 40 new pickups which will be deployed island-wide to conduct more regular fogging. However, like security, our health requires our personal responsibility and action. Dengue is transmitted by a mosquito that breeds in our domestic surroundings. While the government has increased the collection of bulky waste that breeds the mosquito, only you can check the flower vase to see if it has a mosquito larvae in it. Only you can bore holes in the containers you discard around your house. The government cannot come inside your house every day to see to it that the water you store is covered. We can give you the information, but you have to act and take responsibility. In 2020, I encourage all Jamaicans to take personal responsibility for your health and security and fulfill your role as good citizens by cooperating with the authorities to eradicate the pests that threatens your life. Let us know if you have breeding sites near your home. Allow the public health workers to fog your community. Don't stone them. Likewise, tell us where the guns are. Tell us what you know about the criminals. And together, we will make Jamaica safe, secure, and healthy. Many great things have happened in 2019 which gives me great hope for 2020. Let me see how many I can cover in the remaining 
two minutes. Finance, lowest unemployment rate in the history of Jamaica, 7.8%. Longest period of consecutive growth in our history, 19 quarters. Record fall in our debt to GDP ratio, we are now at 93%. Record low inflation, introduction of special procurement incentives for medium and small enterprises. We remove the minimum business tax, reduce transfer tax from 5 to 2%. 1.5 million tax break. I hope you didn't forget that. Successfully completed the IMF program in health. Better cancer care through new radiation facilities. Reducing waiting times at drugstore pharmacies. New helicopters in security. New maritime patrol aircraft for the JDF. New radar system. Doubling the national security budget. You can now renew your passport online. New motorcycles for the police. Major investments in forensics and DNA. Tourism. Wow. Record tourism arrivals, approximately 4.5 million visitors. Record earnings, $3.8 billion. We launched the Tourism Workers Pension Fund, first in the Caribbean. In transport, we launched the DriveSafe app. We commissioned two new air traffic control towers. We implemented Wi-Fi on buses. We completed the pilot program for LNG in buses. In infrastructure, a record 400 roads resurfaced or rehabilitated. We did Mandela Highway, Marcus Garvey Drive, Ferris to McFeed, Barbican, Hagley Park Road, Constant Spring, and Three Miles Road, all almost complete. Junction Road, South Camp Road, being currently repaired. We're going to start the South Coast Highway Improvement from Harborview to Port Antonio and extend the East-West Highway from Maypen to Williamsfield. Over 12 bridges repaired are currently under construction, and we will start the Morant Bay Town Center this year. Water. Over 50 water facilities rehabilitated island-wide. Major upgrades and replacement of water and sewer mains within the corporate area. Reduced NWC water losses from 60% to about 40% in the corporate area. A record $800 million investment in rural water, which brought water to thousands of Jamaicans who never had it in parishes, including Clarendon, St. Elizabeth, and St. Mary. In housing, a record over 27,000 new housing starts between the NHD and the HAJ. Local government, 60 new fire trucks. 43 new garbage trucks successfully completed the tire removal pilot project from Riverton City and will shortly roll out the full project. Paid off $9 billion in streetlight debt to the JPS. Science and technology, free Wi-Fi hotspots across major towns. The Wigton IPO, over 30,000 Jamaicans participated. We commissioned the largest solar plant in the English-speaking Caribbean and the new 194 megawatt JPS LNG plant in Old Arbor is now commissioned. Under the environment, we banned single-use plastics. We have started planting 3 million trees. This month, we will be banning the use of styrofoam in Jamaica, and we will continue to be global leaders in climate change. 7% of Jamaica is now protected as part of the cockpit country. Education. Improve school feeding from three to five days. Comprehensively increase the suite of benefits under the PATH program. Increase maintenance grant for secondary level schools. 269 school canteens upgraded. Successfully launched the PEP certified over 100 early childhood institutions. Labor and Social Security. We increased the minimum wage. We increased NIS benefits to pensioners. Significant increase in overseas employment figures. Culture, gender and entertainment. Three shelters being prepared for abused women, sexual harassment bill tabled, first entertainment zone being renovated, reggae inscribed on the UNESCO intangible cultural list for humanity, the Blue and John Crow Mountains, no World Heritage Sites, ports, expansion of the Port of Kingston, new cruise ship terminal at Port Royal, and the redevelopment of the town of Port Royal has begun. Youth engagement, merger, of Heart Trust, JFLL, NYS, and the Apprenticeship Board to create a comprehensive and effective human capital development agency, the Heart Trust National Service and Trading Agency. Over 25,000 young people trained through HOPE. Over 3,000 trained through the Jamaica National Service Corps under the JDF. And you get the picture. So much done and so much more to do in 2020. Jamaicans at home and abroad, I wish you a happy and prosperous new year. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to like, subscribe, share, leave us a comment and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.